this is real high tech stuff here, y'all. Good evening and welcome to the Talk Right podcast. I'm your host, Wayne Stent. Actually, I was going to say just Talk Right because we were supposed to be dropping the podcast. This isn't a podcast, it's a live stream. But anyway, we got a great show tonight. It's the first show of the fourth season or the first episode of the fourth season of the show. And uh, on our very first show, we had Dan Mason. And then Dan came back for the kickoff of the second season. And then he actually flew into town for the kickoff of the third season. And now he's with us live again in, by Zoom. So, uh, Nick, why don't you take over and uh, finish the introduction? And I'll do some uh, typing here. Okay. Well, here, here we are again, the, the triumphant of the three bald, bearded guys with glasses. Uh, good to be back together again. <laughs> Although that, that, that distinction and, and comparison goes away if you actually put us standing next to each other. Uh, uh, I, would, I would be the one here, and then Wayne's kind of here, and then we have Cap uh, out, of, out of screen. Uh, Cap Daniels is here with us. Uh, he is the author of more books than I can count, and, and you can see them straining to, to be contained uh, uh, on the shelves behind him there. Uh, he has a new one out that just came out, Gambler's Chase. We'll probably ask him a couple questions about that. Uh, I just heard some really cool stuff about the next one, but uh, I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, and then we also have uh, a book coming uh, that he co-wrote uh, called Christian Sniper, I believe, and we'll be asking a little bit about that. Uh, so without further ado, uh, can you tell us a little bit about Gambler's Chase? Good evening, guys. Thanks for having me again. This has become a little bit of a tradition that we sort of do the first show of every season together, and I'm honored to be uh, uh, with you for those. It's been uh, an exciting run for the three of us. Uh, we've sort of intermingled our careers a little bit over the last four years, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've learned so much from both of you, and I, uh, I love sharing this time with you. Uh, in addition to the personal time we get to spend together, I love sharing this time so that we can uh, kind of share our goofery and silliness with uh, <laughs> the people who read our work. But uh, my latest book out uh, was The Gambler's Chase. It was uh, the 21st in the Chase Fulton novel series. And uh, like Wayne, uh, early on, I had a sort of a, a mystique about 21 books since uh, John D. McDonald wrote 21 uh, Travis McGee novels. That was sort of a uh, a crown that uh, that we all feared reaching and surpassing. We will never outright the great John D. McDonald, but it's uh, it's an honor to be in the 21 Club with him that uh, we've been able to put that many books on the shelf. So that book is doing very well. We're extremely happy with it. Uh, it was a, a unique story. We brought in some old enemies from uh, uh, across the Atlantic and across the Pacific for this one and uh, got to tie in a few things that we left untied in some earlier novels. But it's doing very well. If you've not uh, picked it up yet, I would love for you to get a copy. And uh, when you do, please uh, give me a shoot me an email. Let me know what you think. I always enjoy communicating with the readers when I get a chance. Yeah, I debated when I got to that 20th book, I debated whether to continue the series. I had 10 titles that started with Fallen and 10 titles that started with Rising. And I was like, well, what do you do next? And Jesse's the only thing I know. I'm a one trick pony. So, <laughs> so I really didn't have much of a choice. And I, I begged John D's forgiveness, but uh, Randy did it first. So whatever yes, Randy did. does, I do. I've said that over and over again. Right. <laughs> and I'm sort of the third generation of that. Whatever Wayne does, I typically do. <laughs> well, Wayne, does that mean that you're going to open a rum bar? <laughs> Actually? Yeah. I, I've been uh, talking about it opening the rusty anchor bar and grill for a long, long time. Just the opportunity hasn't come up. And uh, right now we've been waiting for a specific restaurant to come up for sale. And it's already got some rusty anchors out in the front yard, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to anytime real soon. So I'm thinking maybe just buy a piece of property and build the rusty anchor exactly as it's depicted in the books. But uh, just 600, 800 miles north. <laughs> that uh, sounds the like a great I way made to turn was... a large fortune into a small one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the greats in our, in our uh, genre, Randy Wayne White, uh, his main character is Doc Ford. So if you're ever in Florida and a number of places now and you happen to see a, 
Doc Ford's uh, rum bar and grill. Uh, that's that's his baby. Uh, and uh, hopefully a number of us will be at Nink this year in St. Petersburg. And uh, there's uh, at least one. I think there's two now. There's one, on the, one on the mainland in St. Pete. And there's one near a bridge, uh, so maybe we'll we'll have the tropical authors get together at a at a Doc Ford's. That would be really that, cool. That would be extremely cool, especially if we could get Randy to come up and join us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me. Oh, do you have any more of the the Russians uh, on the horizon? That will be next when I finish uh, the the Arctic chase that I'm working on now. I will uh, uh, start on the fifth Anya book and. Uh, that will be the Russian sloth. And, uh, I, I've been <laughs> I was wondering where that, was, where that was going to go, how I was going to tie that deadly sin into the series. And uh, I still don't know, but we'll have a lot of fun figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have a, a three-toed sloth with a, uh, it's got a, you know, one of those little microchips Ooh, embedded in its skin. I think I'll make a note. <laughs> <laughs> Exotic animal smugglers. Although that's something I think like Boone and Emily would be involved with, but she's, I think Anya's got bigger things to deal with. In my, uh, late, in my latest release, Fish On, I did a slight, uh, I guess you call it an, an alluding to something that happened in Charity's past. Charity and Jesse are, are well, no, wait a minute. Actually, never mind. I, I, that'd be a spoiler. That's in the new book, Libel Charity. That isn't published yet. So I'm not going to tell you what's in there. <laughs> um, well, tell us, uh, you've got an interesting project coming out. Um, you've got a lot of very popular characters in your, in your chase books, but I, I think uh, one of them is popular enough to get his own treatment. Can you tell us a bit about that project? He certainly has. Singer, our Southern Baptist sniper, as we call him. He sings old Southern Baptist hymns while he's killing people which is sort of an interesting dichotomy, uh, balancing those two worlds <laughs> together. But he's become an incredibly uh, popular character. So uh, I decided to write uh, a novel simply about Singer and how he applies his faith uh, to what he does for a living and his interaction with the team around him. Uh, and I, I learned an enormous amount about a character that I created while I was writing this book. It's bizarre how these characters just come to life and reveal themselves to us. But we, uh, we met him as a nine-year-old boy in this book and followed him through army boot camp and uh, ranger school and sniper school and uh, all the way through several operations and until it ties back into to Chase Fulton novels uh, in book five there. And uh, that's, that's been an incredible project for us. My brother, Dave, and uh, a dear friend, a pastor from uh, um, Ohio, uh, John Grossman helped me with, with this one, and it's turned into a, an amazing project. It's already been a blessing to, to certainly all of us who've had part of it, but we can't wait to turn it loose. It's scheduled for release the end of June, but as is my typical style, I rarely wait until the, the scheduled date to release. You catch me off guard so often with those. <laughs> I think we'll have it on shelves before June. Wow. So, uh, we, we hope that everybody enjoys it, and it, it, it turns into to a little more than just a fictional novel. We, we want it to touch some hearts and souls and, and maybe make some difference in some lives. But this one is not a for-profit book. It's a, it's a for-blessing book. And uh, I think we're going to find some interesting things to do with the proceeds from the book. And we certainly hope that it, uh, it sheds some light on uh, some dark areas that we're experiencing in the world right now. And it's fun to write a book that has the potential to do that. Mike, uh, any of the other few times. characters? I'm sorry, both of you were talking at once. You've, yeah, done, I'll that set few, up. You you've done that a few times, Cap. <laughs> it's a strange things wander into our writings. And you and I write so much uh, by the same technique that it's uh, a little bit surprising when we learn things that we didn't already know about what we're writing. Uh, so many writers write with a plan or an outline. And for me, that would be uh, drudgery. I love every new page and learning what's going to happen next. Yeah, I'm sure you feel the same. Yeah, discovering what's right around the next bend. Even the characters don't know it. I don't know it. The good guys don't know it. The bad guys, nobody knows what's going to happen next. I mean, and yet it all works out. Yeah. I mean, something could come in from left field, an asteroid, and we don't know it until it hits. 
That's, that's, the, that's the magic of writing, I think. Certainly, it's the magic of writing the way we write. Now, Nick's got that uh, whiteboard back behind him. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't follow our style. <laughs> well, he's well I mean, I, I, I will say that uh, a lot of things will stay. But probably half of what I put up there, the characters pull me off of the uh, off of that path. Um, there's usually some set piece things that I absolutely want to happen, uh, but how I get there, I'll, I'll put whatever I want on those little post its, and it's usually not what actually ends up in the book. So uh, I'm, I'm a plotter that's got some pretty strong pants, I guess. <laughs> Our characters don't always behave the way we want them to. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Fallen Hunter was supposed to take place entirely in the Keys and Cozumel, but most of the action takes place in Cuba. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't driving the boat. Jesse was. <laughs> the same thing happened with Gambler's Chase for me. I had no idea it was going to turn into a book about Cuba, and it 70% of the book happens in Cuba. It's funny how that one little island, well, it's not so little, but that one island down just 90 miles south of Florida, it kind of draws draws people like us. It does. Romantics. You're a romantic. I know it. I'm a romantic. And it just has that old style mystique. It does. It's mysterious and charming. And we know so little about what actually goes on there. That gives us the freedom to, to write anything we want. My friend Bradford went down there when they opened up for that short time and he, he just jumped in his sailboat and headed, headed to Cuba. <laughs> and, That's fantastic. Uh, he had, he said it was a, the adventure of a lifetime and I, I'm hoping to be able to do it myself one day. Do you still have your boat? No, I sold it uh, last August. I knew uh, you were going to sell it. I didn't know you had. Uh, I g actually uh, sold it for more than I paid for it. Hmm. And uh, got rid of my motorcycles, uh, got rid of all the boats. And wow. I, I, it's, I, I'm safe to drive a pickup truck, but that's only because it's real big and people stay out of my way. <laughs> but uh, I, I wouldn't ride a motorcycle around here anymore. Just no, not a chance. That's dangerous everywhere. Yeah. Especially when you don't see well. Well, speaking of things that strike me as dangerous as, as a means of conveyance, uh, uh, I hear tell that uh, 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 pilot Cap here uh, may be moving beyond fixed wing to rotary. Uh, is it true you're, you're taking classes? Well, we're trying. Classes are sort of taking me. It, uh, flying a helicopter is an entirely different experience than fixed wing aircraft. I've been flying uh, conventional aircraft for over 35 years and I believed I could climb in the seat of a helicopter and prove to be a pretty good pilot. What I've proven so far is that I'm a complete idiot inside a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> the only similarities between a helicopter and, a, and an airplane for me is if you crash one you're going to die. So and that you, seems a lot more likely in the helicopter to me. Do you think the higher <laughs> center of gravity inside the cockpit might have something to do with it? I think it's the 35 million moving parts that seems to be the, <laughs> that are moving very, very fast. They yeah. are moving incredibly fast. It, it takes such dexterity and, uh, and such coordination, both hands and both feet constantly, uh, which is so unlike conventional aircraft. But I'm having a blast and I, I will finish the training and I, I will acquire the rating, but it, uh, it may take a little longer than I had hoped. That'd be, that would be awesome. And then you could get a helicopter and land it on your yacht. <laughs> Helicopters on sailboats don't work well. <laughs> oh yeah, that's you got a point there. But uh, well, you uh, you've been taking quite a few clients. I mean, I I'm amazed. I think a lot of authors will go out and do one thing or two things and go, okay, yeah, I learned how to do this. You seem to be acquiring new skills to to match the people in your books. Almost every few months, you're doing something. Uh, can you tell us some of the, the classes you've been taking or will be taking? Certainly. I'm a huge fan of authenticity. 
And I learned early on, Wayne warned me of this, but I learned very early on in writing that people will bust you on the, uh, on the details. If you get one little thing wrong, you'll get 3,500 emails about that one little thing you got wrong. So if I'm going to write about uh, tactical professionals and uh, operators in the, in the black ops world, I think I should know a little bit about the world. So I spend a lot of time at, uh, at training events across the country. The next one that I'm planning to go to is a, a precision rifle and combat pistol course in West Texas um, that is being hosted by Frogman Tactical, a former SEAL who has uh, turned teaching that type of material into uh, sort of a ministry for, uh, for himself. And that's a, an intriguing combination to me. We mentioned earlier Singer's connection with his faith and uh, his tactical world. And uh, the, the gentleman who <clears throat> teaches these classes for Frogman Tactical seems to be a very similar, <clears throat> similar personality with a similar background and has a great message to share while teaching critical skills that, that people need to know and understand. So I'm uh, very excited about that class. And we do, do a great deal of classes with uh, tactical riflemen in, in uh, uh, Northeast Tennessee, or I'm sorry, in uh, Eastern Middle Tennessee. Uh, we do a lot up there with them. We do a lot of room clearing classes, a lot of uh, combat pistol and rifle classes with those guys. And they're wonderful as well. But uh, this will be my first time with Frogman Tactical. And uh, I'll have a report on, on how their classes go. And we'll, we'll talk about that when I get back from that class. But I love including those details and those uh, real stories uh, within my fiction. I think it makes it more authentic and more enjoyable for the reader. Uh, do we have any questions from YouTube before I... I just, I just switched over there and asked a question myself. Oh, is anybody here? <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> I don't know. Is anybody even watching, Jordan? Yeah. How many? Ten. Oh, we, well, we got 10 people watching. So, all right. Ask, yeah, give us some questions. <laughs> Just um, jump right over there and join the chat. <laughs> so, let me ask you real quick. I'll, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, uh, how far are you from St. Petersburg? Me? Yes. Oh, about uh, an hour and 30 minutes or so uh, in the airplane. So if uh, it's looking like about 16 tropical authors uh, descend on there in, in September, I think you might be able to pop over and maybe join us at a Doc Fords. Well, my lovely bride has scolded me aggressively for not uh, booking our spot for Nink. So if there are still spots available, I'm going to grab one and we'll, and we'll come down for that. Excellent. Yeah, we've, we're Just keeping keep our watching, eyes on that. Watch your email and when... It because last year they did the same thing. They closed registration. And then sometime, I think it was in June, uh, Britt and Nick can tell you for sure, but they reopened registration for like one day. I remember that. He managed to get in. If we can grab a spot, we'll definitely come down. And if, even if we can't, uh, if we get to do something at uh, Randy's place, perhaps we can fly down for that evening and uh, enjoy dinner together. Cool. Yeah, that, that'd be a lot of fun. Well, I know John Cunningham wants to get in if they open up too. So we'll keep an eye on that. Good. Um, I've not actually met him yet. Oh, really? Oh, man. Not See, yet. this could be a party. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you two were talking about how much your writing is similar, it seems, and, and maybe also how much you both love Cuba as a setting. Uh, is it possible we're going to see the two of you work together on uh, one of these tropical authors novellas or novels probably be a novel with you guys could I'll be let you feel that cap <laughs> <laughs> it looks like that's going to happen we're we're working on the details of that and i think that uh, we'll be able to get that project put together not only would it be enjoyable for us but it'll be an opportunity for some readers to to uh, to see how our work melds together instead of uh, in separate it's, books it will be a difficult diff very difficult meld because Anya's in 2005. She is. That makes it a little touchy. And Charity's in present time. And the other characters that we're talking with are also in pre Actually, they're in neither time. They're they just not time relevant. But uh, we came up with a way to make it happen. Oh, and I like that I, little flashback. Yeah, I think it'll be really, really cool. A little Anya and Charity pass. Oh, very nice. You know, but that's going to be a lot of fun. And the, the maybe Anya, a retired Anya from the present could appear in it. Oh, that could be fun. And 
oh, actually, that is that would that would be really cool, wouldn't it? It would. I like that idea. It, as long as I don't kill her off between now and or between then and now. <laughs> so that that would be eighteen years older, or which is okay. She's in her thirties now. Yeah. So she would be close. She'd be slightly o- older than Charity now. So not completely retired. No. And uh, that that's sort of a sneak peek into into what's going to happen in the future. We we don't know much about what's going to happen, but I do know that Anya is going to play a significant role later in, uh, and of course her series as well as Chase's as, uh, as that grow, grows mm-hmm. in number. So that'll she'll be fun be, to bring them. She'll be back together. in another Chase book. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I think that I think Penny would be pissed. <laughs> well, she probably so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't get along real well. No, I would imagine not. I think Penny has nothing to worry about. If Singer's book does really well, have have you considered some of your other ancillary characters getting uh, uh, some special treatment? I hadn't thought of that before I wrote Singer's book. And the fun and excitement of writing that book made me want to write stories about the other characters. I don't know if I can write a full length novel about most of the others, but we could certainly do some short stories, maybe an anthology of, mm-hmm. uh, of character backgrounds. That might be fun. That's something uh, we've been kicking that idea around. Well, you're just full of ideas, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <Full of something. laughs> I mean, here he is gallivanting all around the country in his airplane, going to all these shoot 'em ups and writing how many books a year Four, at least six six books a year and all this other stuff and you still work in a full-time job well i I still show up at a full-time job every day i don't know how much work i actually produce but we're getting closer and closer to retirement every day so that will that will happen soon and i'll be able to to devote more time to writing and traveling and living I don't think you should devote more time to writing. Now I'll vote <laughs> no on the faster go travel somewhere. <laughs> I like that idea. We'll we catch can ride up. from anywhere. <laughs> exactly. Um, if, if anyone here uh, watched the last time we had uh, cap on uh, his narrator, uh, PJ Auckland uh, informed us that he was now flying and you have some more news on, on uh, PJ's advancement toward what did you say he was getting? I do. He finished his private pilot certificate and now he's uh, working on his instrument rating. So he's learning to fly without seeing outside the airplane. Wow. And, uh, last time I spoke with him about it, it was going very well and he's thoroughly enjoying it. So uh, he's re fallen in love with flying that he had tucked away for uh, a decade or so. But <clears throat> it's really nice to see him back in the air again. And we plan to do a trip to LA to spend some time with him for a research trip for one of Anya's stories. Mm. And uh, we will definitely do some flying together while we're out, while we are. That's fantastic. There. Well, um, if, you, if you come, if you fly down to Nink, I can guarantee you at least one person will want to go up with you. Yeah, one of your offspring, no doubt. This, this, this one sitting in front of me has been so hooked on airplanes since that day last year. I loved flying with her. She is just bonkers about airplanes. <laughs> It's amazing. You fall in love with it or you don't. It, it's one of those things that most people either have a deep passion for it or just don't care. And there's very little in between. I, I like riding in airplanes. I, I'm, I, I've flown a few times and it's just kind of boring if I can't just continually look around. <laughs> yes. But you, you got to watch where you're going. <laughs> you do. There, there are a few things to do aloft. Yes. Um, so I, I guess something I didn't realize, did I hear you correctly that PJ was rediscovering his love of flying? Does that mean that when I hooked you two up, he was already a pilot? He had, <clears throat> he was already a student pilot. He had taken several lessons wow. and I think even soloed um, many years ago and uh, life got in the way and he sort of took the, uh, the craft of flying away while he built his fabulous career on the West coast. And after working a little bit together. I may have encouraged him to get back in the cockpit a little. And now he's, he's discovered that early love again. And I love hearing him to talk about it. He, uh, he enjoys it. I believe as much as I do. Wonderful. 
Well, Wayne, Wayne and I are hoping uh, uh, he's been helping me out. Um, uh, the union has expressed some interest, the SAG-AFTRA union that does the narrators, of coming down to Nink. And if they do so, they're probably going to bring some narrators. Uh, uh, so if that happens, I'm going to be calling PJ and begging him to come out. <laughs> he's fantastic. Thank you so much for connecting me with him. He's, uh, he's really brought our characters to life and, uh, and changed the way I write the series in many ways, like Wayne says about you. Fantastic. Uh, I sort of hear my characters in, uh, in PJ's voice now. That's one of the coolest things about what we do. It's not so much the connections we make, but the connections that we make with others. Or Absolutely. Connections that we create for others or with others. And uh, uh, just putting somebody together, you know, somebody who has a need and somebody else who has a, a, an answer and they don't know each other yet. And just boom, put them together and watch the magic happen. It's bizarre how much we have in common and yet how unique each of us are or each of us is uh, that we can learn so much from each other. And you taught me your very early on in my career that uh, we are not competitors. We are colleagues and nothing could be more true about, about writers. In my opinion, I have never met a writer who was unwilling to help another writer. And that's a beautiful thing about our community. Well, there is a group out there that, are just absolute the worst of the worst, but we don't associate with those people. <laughs> well, that's one of the requirements for tropical authors. You know, we look at, you know, do they have decent covers? Do they have a lot of books? Do they write in the tropical? But another thing is, do we think they play nice with others? Sure. Uh, we, we, we want people uh, who are eager to interact with the other tropical authors and help each other out. Speaking of which, uh, Kirk is on YouTube and he's saying, you're going to love it when you kick that government job to the curb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kirk, how are you, my friend? <laughs> Kirk is just down the road from me. They're, uh, well, some of the time, uh, one of their homes is uh, in Port St. Joe. And uh, oh, my, my microphone. Uh, has I know started. it's like coming toward you. I, I think I'm going to leave it alone and see what it does. <laughs> well, it's, it might get a little pornographic <laughs> if it keeps going. That was bizarre. <laughs> Maybe that's something. Ha We've been joking, everybody, that uh, Cap works a full-time job into six books a year because he's got uh, like a twin that he has trapped in a in a prison cell behind these books. <laughs> he, there's some little button he opens it up and he goes in, give me my pages for the day. <laughs> I'm losing this battle terribly. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to work on this while you guys chat. <laughs> All right. I'll just hold it. Melissa, you need to go to your husband's rescue. She's in the chat talking. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. It's coming together. I think we can make this work. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm, I have gone through all of the questions I have here. Do we have anything uh, from the peanut gallery there? All of a sudden they're coming alive. Okay. Um, well, Kirk is anyway. Kirk's got a new book out, I believe. I didn't do the newsletter this time, so I don't remember the name, but I think he's got one out now. But no, no more questions. Okay. Well, I have something I would like to bring up. While oh, good. Here. Oh, yeah. While you wrestle with the microphone. Well, I'm going to win, I promise. <laughs> Come on, Cap. You're bigger than that, Mike. Yes, yes, I am. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yeah, it sounds That's fine. Good. All right. We won that little battle. Um, <clears throat> part of Wayne and my coming together several years ago involved a, a magnificent talent and a wonderful lady we all fall in love with the second we meet her, Dawn Lee McKenna. And uh, as all of you know, we lost her several years ago or a couple of years ago. And um, it was a, a terrible loss fault felt across the world of fiction. And uh, everyone who knew her misses her dearly. Um, there's a, a move afoot now to uh, bring her Sweet Tea Press back online. And uh, Axel Blackwell is uh, spearheading that, that little uh, endeavor. And I think they're going to release 
at least one audio book right away, and then a new book that uh, Dawn was working on uh, when she fell ill and uh, was unable to finish. I think uh, Axel has uh, spent a lot of time with that work and, and got it in really nice shape, something that Dawn would have uh, been very proud of. So if you will check out Axel Blackwell on, uh, on Facebook, and uh, if you're not a member of his uh, email list yet, please do so and you'll get a free copy of uh, a little book they put together. And then uh, you'll get notified when they do release that book that she was working on when she passed. But she's near and dear to our hearts and I always like to uh, thank her and, uh, and look up and remember her dearly. And I'm sure Wayne feels the same way. Yeah, I'll just uh, put the uh, link in my newsletter this morning. So all my, all my readers that were her readers now know where, where to find her, find the uh, mailing list. Good. And uh, I'm look I'm really looking forward to reading this. This, I mean, we, we lost a great writer and uh, these will be her last words. I was really lucky hard. enough uh, to narrate that audiobook that's referred to. We're hopefully going to have all three of them out. Uh, the Stillwater Suspense series that Axel co-wrote with uh, Dawn. Um, uh, I sort of cut yeah, you've my You've already recorded on, that, right? I've, I've recorded it. Yeah, it's it's oh, going to okay. go out. But uh, I, I've done a lot of mystery. I think I've probably done more mysteries and thrillers than any other category. And it was without a doubt, uh, one of the best crime uh, police procedural mysteries I've ever read. It was fantastic. Um, marvelous twists, marvelous characters. Uh, I, I was just thrilled. <laughs> Talked to several of my narrator friends. I'm like, this is so good. <laughs> well, Axel, so, Axel has a black lot. background in law enforcement. So I, I definitely, all, I mean, I've read several of his books and they're really, really good. Very to the point and factual. You know that, I mean, just reading it, you know, this guy used to be a cop or maybe he still is. Uh, but that book is called Dead Reckoning. Uh, and we're, we're trying to put it out to as many places as possible, including uh, they'll be able to sell it directly from Sweet Tea Press. Um, so as, as soon as that audio gets uh, finalized and we have a cover and everything, Dead Reckoning should be available soon. We didn't discuss that beforehand, but it was something that was on my mind. <clears throat> and I hope you don't mind that we brought it up. No, I had it on my notes too. Good. And with that, we are actually, we're actually in overtime. Do we have anything else, Nick? I've, I've gone through my list. Do we want to give the YouTubers one last chance? Anybody there asking anything? I'm, I'm watching it closely. Uh, Captain okay, Boomy. well. <laughs> Captain Boomy's just popped in. She's a delivery captain and uh, don't know where she is right now, but it's probably somewhere tropical and exotic. And I try to never miss a public opportunity to thank Wayne for everything he did to change my life. Wayne and I became friends shortly after I wrote my first book. And uh, without him, you probably would have never heard of me. So uh, thank you, Wayne. Well, for we, Yeah, we would have probably three days later. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 was in the, I was in the middle of reading your first book <laughs> and I contacted Don. And I said, hey, you got to read this book. It's great. I, I gave her a link to the title. She said, I'm already reading it. <laughs> I will always appreciate what you've done for me and treasure your friendship and your mentorship. Uh, it ain't nothing, man. It's what we do. Well, with that, I don't see any more questions over here. Nope. No more questions. Okay. Well, with that, uh, unless you got something, Nick. Nope. All good. Oh, okay. Then, well, we're just going to end the show then. Uh, I want to thank you again for being on with us, uh, Cap. It's always good to have you on. And we're just going to go ahead and say this now. We're going to make this an annual tradition. And I maybe, love that. It's maybe, we'll move it, maybe we'll move it to the January 1st show. One thing I did want to talk about is what your views on the, this past year and the coming year are. Uh, a great deal of thanks for the previous year. We're, we've been blessed beyond measure. The books uh, have taken on a life of their own. I'm so thankful for that. And uh, the, the year ahead is bright and wonderful. And we're so excited about telling more stories and 
and getting to know more writers and more readers and uh, enjoy spending time with those folks who are the reason that we get to be successful. Without those guys, uh, we, we don't exist. We're telling stories to ourselves. And, uh, but the outlook is wonderful. And uh, I hope the same is true for both of you. I liked what you said last year that it's the, it's uh, so much fun to just play with the people in our heads. It is. Play with the imaginary, uh, imaginary people. That's what you said. Play with the imaginary. Day we get to go outside and play with our imaginary friends. What? Yeah. How could That's... you want more out of a career? <laughs> no doubt. All right. Well, thank you for being on cap. And as thank always, you. Nick, thanks. Thanks for, uh, being here and uh doing all the grunt work uh, <laughs> all i do is just sit here and make sure that thing goes on and all that involves is me looking over at jordan so thank you jordan for being the producer of the talk right show and i uh, would like to thank uh, aurora publicity down island press down island publishing uh how not to sell um, who am i forgetting Latitudes and Attitudes, Bob Bitchin. How you doing, Bob? And of course, Captain Boomies. She's a, a regular on the Bob show and also on Bradford show. So uh, y'all have a great day and take care of each other and enjoy the, enjoy the summer. It's summertime, y'all. Good night, everybody.